Today, Julia will be taking us through what their daily activities are. Also, most of the processes that the public might not even be aware of. So over to Julia. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, the public generally think that we're only about adoptions and strays. That's not true whatsoever. Um, we have a small hospital, so we have a veterinary division. We take care of people's animals who can't afford the private veterinary fees. So they come to us for assistance. Daily routines here, it's not just about running an office, it's also about caring for all the animals that come into our care. So our daily routine starts with clocking in and coffee. I think everybody knows about that. <laughs> and then we move down to the kennels where our kennel handlers have to check on their animals. They're all dedicated to certain rows, so they get to know the animals. It means getting the animal out of the kennel, cleaning the kennel, and there's a certain way to cleaning. It's not just a matter of slushing and khatan. Um, it's feeding in the morning, especially with the young ones and the puppies. Then it's exercising their dogs. Thankfully, we do have volunteers who can come onto site. They take the dogs out, they go for walks. Then it's the veterinary division. We've got the hospital to go through. We've got all the patients to look at. And the handlers of the kennel division have to also bring to our attention if they see anything that they spot that is a little bit off. And uh, they bring that to the medical attention. And then those animals are seen. From there, we start consulting at 10 o'clock from 10 to 3. And a doctor goes into surgery from 10 till about 2. Today, strangely enough, I think it's well after two now, he's still in surgery. He had 18 surgeries to do today. Monday is always the worst. Um, and then it starts all over again before closing time. It's the feeding, the cleaning, making sure everybody's got their beds, water, medication. And so it goes. So this is a, a small section of our catio, as we call it. Uh, we have the main cattery. You can be able to swing around on the building in a moment. Um, so at night, the cats actually go into their rooms. They've got allocated rooms. But during the day, we like them to stretch their legs and have a little bit of fun. If you just follow me, you'll see what Eugenie very cleverly did. We built a little window so they can go in and out at will. Um, it's really important for the cats to socialize, to be able to go up, down, have sun, interact, and um, yeah. What I do want to mention something while we're with the cats is, and this is only a small amount, number of the cats that we have here, it really is sad that people <sighs> cannot for some reason afford to keep the animals anymore. The economy is really shocking with COVID really, I think, killed a lot of families financially. And so animals are brought to the welfares and we have to try and find them new homes. The responsibility of taking care of these animals and the amount of animals that we get is huge. Um, it's not just financial, it's also emotional. Um, the emotional aspect is, you know, you work with them, you get to know them, you get to love them. And at the end of the day, you can't keep an indefinite amount and choices need to be made. And that is the hard reality of it. Right, um, main kennels, if you'd like to swoop down. What we do here in the kennels is we do not believe in keeping our animals caged 24 seven. So each row or block has its own run. We have behaviorists on site as well. Susan, who's a volunteer. Um, and then our kennel manager Reese is also excellent with behaviorism so we meet, she, they match the dogs in terms of who can go who, with who so they can all get out and socialize and interact and spend as much time outdoors as possible. Obviously at night they go back into the kennels. Okay. So what is your most difficult part of the job on a daily basis? What will you say in your opinion is the <laughs> un most unpleasant part of the job? Okay, I smile but I'm actually not smiling. Um, dealing with the numbers that come in here. Uh, we are an open door facility. That means no animals are turned away. Um, 
It means that when one comes to the door, one has to make space. And in doing so, if that animal isn't adopted, it then has to be put to sleep in order to make the space. They stream in into this facility in thousands per year. And as you walk around, you'll see we are big. We are big. We're not, not a small facility, but we're not infinitely big. So that is probably the hardest call. And I think the way people can help is by taking responsibility of their own pets. Don't just get a pet not knowing, not researching what it is that you want and then finding after a few months or a year, uh, it's not fitting in, let's just give it to the welfare. You know, because uh, that places the burden on us. It, it takes away their responsibility, it becomes our responsibility, which is heartbreaking. It, it's emotionally, it's draining. Um, people need to take responsibility, sterilize your pets, um, know what you're getting, adopt. Don't shop, adopt. And yes, there is a fee, a, um, apply to our adoption rate so people will say oh but you know you're making money uh, 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 we're not making any money here we've still got to have those animals vaccinated microchipped sterilized they get to complete the upkeep while they're here there's got to be food water staff salaries people got to look after them so but yes um, another very sad reality is seeing them come through the door and they are broken but they've got owners and they're thin and now you've got to fix them and you've got to return them back so you try and educate the owner but you know in your heart it's not going to pan out so yeah so as I can see in the mensen amazing work so more let us all self heard of so that's the Nazis so you can give a course converse and then the Nazis Een goede idee is misschien om tijdje wat kost te bestellen, dat we hem afleveren en dan zelf in de terrein niet. Maar dat kort ons allemaal zelf. Dus ons gaan champion de wedstrijd gaan een campagne eraan waar je kunt in de nazi's keer bij zeker van je scholen in die areas. Ons gaan bij de kantoren kom afleiden, kost afleiden, kom bij ze afleiden. Ons dat zorgen dat die uitkomt en wat het goed kan het worden.